Beryllium is the second lightest metal after lithium and has properties such as resistance to corrosion and a toughness five times greater than steel per weight that make it ideal for many uses. It's also very rare. Although generally spread throughout the Earth's crust, it's only found in useful amounts in a few source minerals. The only commercial source of beryllium in the United States is located in an isolated desert region of western Utah. This is the story of that deposit and how it is mined, refined, and turned into beryllium metal, alloys, and ceramics. This is the story of how beryllium is unearthed. Have you ever wondered where the chemical elements come from, how they were discovered, and how they are mined, refined, and turned into finished products? Would you like to know where materials like glass, steel, and concrete come from? Do you need to find out how energy is produced, the environmental impacts and hazards of chemicals, or the history of chemistry? Student teams from communities around the country are interviewing scientists, engineers, and historians to answer these questions in the elements unearthed, our discovery and usage of the chemical elements. This episode of The Elements Unearthed was made possible by Brush Resources, producers of beryllium products. Our subject expert is Phil Sabe, manager of technology and quality at Brush Resources Concentration Plant near Delta, Utah. Uses of beryllium. If you were to hold a piece of beryllium metal in your hand, you'd think it was plastic because of its light weight. Beryllium is very much needed for the nuclear program. It's also very much in demand for aerospace, deep space exploration, because it's the lightest solid element we have. It's a third lighter than aluminum. It's five times stiffer than steel for the same weight. And when you alloy it with other metals, particularly copper, you get some wonderful properties, much more higher performance than phosphor bronze. We have 4% beryllium, 96% copper. You end up with an alloy which has the hardness of spring steel and about 95% of the conductivity of pure copper. The mm -hmm. nice thing about the hardness is now you can make non-sparking tools for gas and oil exploration, non-magnetic tools, for computer applications. Because of its lightness, hardness, ability to absorb heat without expanding, and other properties, beryllium is used in aerospace applications. It's found in many places in the space shuttle, such as the brake linings, rocket nozzles, and the windshield. It's being used for the mirror segments and other components of the James Webb Space Telescope. Because of its thermal stability, beryllium can handle the extreme cold of space better than glass mirrors. The 18 mirror segments of the Webb telescope will give it a total area of 25 square meters, which is several times larger than the primary mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope. Since it will be an infrared telescope, its components must be kept shielded from the sun in order to pick up the heat from far distant galaxies. The beryllium mirror segments must be perfectly shaped to create a parabola once it reaches its final operating temperature of 35 degrees Kelvin. They are being tested in extremely cold conditions, and any deformations noted, then ground and polished to compensate for these distortions. It is transparent x-rays. So another use of beryllium is all of the x-ray equipment that's used in medical research and also analytical tools usually have a beryllium window. Beryllium was also used for the housings of high-speed inertial guidance gyroscopes in Saturn V rockets and Minuteman and Trident missiles, and for high-speed optical guidance mirrors for weather satellites. Because it's opaque to neutrons, beryllium is used as a moderator in nuclear reactors, and beryllium pipes are used as particle beam guides in the Large Hadron Collider at CERN and at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center in California. Beryllium is used because its hardness allows a high vacuum to be maintained inside a beryllium pipe. Its thermal stability allows the pipes to be maintained at an ideal temperature only a few degrees above absolute zero, and beryllium's diamagnetic nature won't interfere with the klystron magnets used to accelerate the particles. Our largest alloy customer is connectors for computers, automobiles, home electronics, because of the high resistance to corrosion of salt water, corrosion, oxidation of the air, and the memory effect that 
they can make or break the contact millions of times without failure. One example of that would be the mid 70s and early 80s uh, with the power window buttons in our cars up and down, a lot of them would fail. Some of the major automotive companies solved that problem by moving the buttons to the console between the front seats. Other manufacturers paid the price of a few cents per switch, switched to beryllium copper in the contacts, and left the controls in the door where they were convenient for people to get to. Beryllium even has excellent acoustic properties because of its low coefficient of expansion, and it's used to make the tweeters in high-end speaker systems. Because of its hardness and resistance to wear, beryllium alloy springs and balances are used in precision timepieces. Finally, beryllium alloys and ceramics are used as heat sinks and contacts in electronics applications and in cell phones and car doors. Altogether, beryllium is an extremely useful element. Sources of Beryllium Beryllium is the first member of the alkaline earth family of elements, which means that it's highly reactive and easily bonds to form compounds, but is difficult to separate into a pure metal. Beryllium was discovered by Louis Nicolas Vauquelin in 1798 as a component of beryl and in emeralds. Friedrich Wohler and Antoine Boussy independently isolated beryllium metal in 1828 by reacting potassium metal with beryllium chloride. We now know that beryllium is found in only a few minerals, including the beryl family and in bertrandite. Beryl is a hexagonal crystal of beryllium aluminum cyclosilicate that can have various colors depending on impurities. Trace amounts of chromium or sometimes vanadium give it a deep green color. It's called emerald. Emeralds have been prized as gemstones for thousands of years. Today the main source of emeralds is Colombia in South America. Trace amounts of iron two ions produce a blue-green variety of beryl called aquamarine. Small amounts of iron three produce shades of beryl from golden yellow to greenish yellow called heliodor. Manganese two impurities produce pink beryl called morganite. Completely pure beryl is colorless and is called goshenite. The rarest form of beryl is red beryl, mined only in the Wawa Mountains of southwestern Utah. It gets its color from traces of manganese 3 and is a deeper red than morganite. In addition to these gem varieties of beryl, there is non-gem beryl, which is opaque and considered semi-precious. It's chiefly mined in Brazil in the Minas Gerais district, although some deposits exist in Colorado and New England as well. It is New Hampshire's state mineral. Bertrandite, on the other hand, is a pinkish mineral consisting of hydrous beryllium silicate. It doesn't form very large crystals. It tends to be found clinging to grains of igneous pegmatites such as granite. The Bertrandite in the Spore Mountains of western Utah is found in highly altered rhyolite and is the only deposit large enough and concentrated enough to mine commercially. It's the sole source of beryllium for all of the United States. Beryllium is also found in a few other rare minerals, such as chrysoberyl, which is beryllium aluminum oxide, phenakite, which is beryllium silicate, euclase, which is hydrous beryllium aluminum silicate, hamburgite, which is hydrous beryllium borate, and berylinite, which is sodium beryllium phosphate.